The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow Industrials down one. NASDAQ is up 13. S&P is up one and a half. Gold contract up $3.80, trading at 134820 It gold up 22 bucks yesterday. You get a confirmed ABC structure up to uh, 1354 More than likely, you're going to see that extended to 1365 folks. Uh, silver, silver is up $0.08, cents, $16.05 an ounce. We get light sweet crude flat, $56.10 a barrel. Notes and bonds, 10-year note flat, 122.07. 30-year bond down 7 at 146.20. We get the Fed minutes at 2 o'clock. Sure and what's going to get interesting here, folks, is that just came across the tape. I saw. That the uh, the news media, normally the news media get it uh, get it early, so all those articles are going out right at 2. Bottom line, Washington's closed. they got a big storm up there. So uh, guess what? When it first comes across the tape, you're going you're gonna to be reading fast. Yeah, nobody else is going to have access. going to no hit the lines at 2 o'clock, and we're all going to find out what they have to say. We're off to the races. You got it. King dollar. King dollar's up 46 ticks, trading 96,395. King dollar failed last Friday. Bottom line, um, still hanging tough out here. And it's pretty amazing that it's hanging tough when you got gold up, silver up, and copper. Copper's the big number out here, folks. Copper blue topside yesterday. Monster volume wants a lot higher price. You get the um, euro trading at 11341. The yen is at 11083, and the pound is at 13032 to one US dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, outstanding show. You want to understand options, option strategies, futures, all of the above. No matter where you are in this great country of ours, in this great world of ours, actually, just go to TFNN at YouTube, um, and bottom line, you're going to get a great education. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. I just want you guys to know I spent a couple days down in what I refer to now as O'Brienville. That's a beautiful day. Florida. Yeah. And now I'm back here for Snowmageddon coming at me, and I'm wondering what the heck am I doing? <laughs> I know, man. I I feel for you. <laughs> Because, yeah, seriously, man. I mean, and you know, it's. I, I know you felt it, Kevin. I mean, we, we really, it, it's been the, like the summer. It's a spring summer. Yeah. So you hit some beautiful weather, man. Yeah. This past weekend, man. Great week. Just unbelievable Record weather. highs. Record highs was like 83. It's going to be 83 almost all week, which is crazy. Yeah. Stop it. Stop that. Sorry. Sorry. Oh well, I'll, I'll give yeah. you the other silver lining, Kevin. Two two days ago, I it's so beautiful out. I wasn't here yesterday. Yeah. I got a glob of sunscreen in my eye. Disclaimer for everybody out there: warning label. Don't do that. Don't right. be. Don't be me. Business. Um, I have. I had to go to walk-in clinic, man. They call it chemical oh conjunctivitis. Goodness. I didn't know there was such a thing, Ooh. man. Not contagious, thankfully. But I'm feeling better. I'm back, so I'm I'm braving that sun, man. <laughs> so you guys are right. The the uh, Fed minutes are going to be the big news this afternoon when we get them, and why? Because this is you know three weeks ago is when they came out with the whole tone change and yeah. the patience and things like that. So under this new transparency, are they going to give any big news? I don't know. Maybe we've already gotten it. Although you may find out if someone uh, dissented, that's something you get in minutes that you don't get in the normal release. And then you'll get the complete, um, you know, all the economic analysis from each Fed official. Those are the two things you're really going to get. Will they make any headlines? No idea. We'll, you know, we'll yeah, see you when know. it comes out. I, I, what's going to be intriguing here, there's no doubt, uh, just as Kevin said, folks, it's going to be what are the Hawks thinking and what do they say? You know right. what I mean? Because the turnaround was so dramatic. I mean, it's like, hey, th that was quite a turnaround, man. And when you look at those Fed fund futures, the, the probability that we get a rate cut is like 300 times bigger than a, a rate hike. <laughs> it's like pretty yeah, amazing. I mean, that's pretty, am it is pretty amazing. You're exactly right. Rarely do you, do you have such a divergence, right? It's usually everyone's on the same page. I think there's a lot of unknowns out there right now, and it all has to do with, you know, what happens with this, uh, you know, with the data that's coming out. And I, I, I think, Tom, 
Here's my theory, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I think it all has to do with crude oil prices. Okay. Are the driver of a lot of this economy. Because think about this. Last CPI number that, that we got out about a week and a half ago. Yes. There was inflation across the board that was all muted by lower gas prices. Right. So if oil picks up, I think you're going to start to see inflation pick up. And I think oil and bond prices could really be something to trade going forward because that's where inflation could start picking up if crude oil starts to close that gap you know, yeah. and expose the other factors that are actually have some rising costs. So it, it's going to be real interesting. No, it is, man. And, you know, Kevin, the, you know, like – that copper market yesterday took off like a rocket ship. Gold did too and silver, but I always love it when copper takes off too. Because, you know, I was looking at the softs. The softs are getting killed. Um, yeah. But if this dollar keeps going south, well, it, no, the thing that's amazing, the dollar hasn't even gone south yet. The dollar's really at highs. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's copper really, took off, gold it, it took even, off, you know. So it's... Yeah, if you're, a, if you're a dollar short, Tom, you're not happy with this. <laughs> Not near enough. No, for what not even close. For. Sure, it's off its highs, but it's not anywhere where you want it to be yet. No, no, it's not. And, you know, we'll see if those commodities, uh, you know, I, yeah. I always like it when that copper took off like a rocket ship. I mean, the copper, folks, is up 10 cents in, one, in 24 hours. That's a, that's a big number, man. So, And then, you know what's interesting here, Kevin, is that the, the NDX 100 and the NASDAQ, they can't get traction, man. I mean, it's like, well, right. you know, it's kind of interesting because those are the stocks we know. They can lug the market up. They can lug the market down. And they're sure. just kind of laying there, you know? So, Right. I mean, think about it, Tom. For the NASDAQ deck to get going, you got to have the FANG stock yes. going. Yes. Right? 30% of the NASDAQ is the FANG plus futures and, and, and the FANG stocks, and they need those. So when Facebook is struggling like it did yesterday, other, you know, Apple has been under a little bit of pressure now after rallying. So, I mean, if you're looking at, at NASDAQ, it's got to be led by Fang. Yeah, no, there's, there's no doubt. And, you know, hey, we'll see what happens. Maybe they're just resting. Yeah. But that's always uh, kind of a heads up, too. It's like, okay, man, where are you going to go with this that's baby? Why we, that's why we trade them up, right? Just Oliver Rennick and I were just talking about in the air. Uh, you've got Devon Energy up big, Concho Energy down yeah. big today. So, I mean... Stock pickers. I think some firms are getting it right. Look at, I mean, everyone with the numbers that we we, we were getting thought Walmart might be weak. They killed it yesterday. Yeah, they did. So four percent comp sales. Yeah. Imagine, Dude. imagine having a five hundred and twenty-eight billion dollar company and you get four percent comp sales. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> that is yeah, amazing, amazing, man. It is. You know, and so I, I hope you know. I, I love trading oil, man. So, you know, this would be really intriguing, uh, you know, if we can get that baby going. Because the, between that and the yep. XLE, uh, there's a lot of equity. They love, they love big consolidations, man. You know, you just, you know, just take that fat middle. You don't need the top and the bottom, you know. So, I just think, you know, crude oil, that, that uh, CPI number that we had gave me more pause than it did most people because you saw the headline number come in unchanged and yes. that signal of like no inflation. But there's some hidden numbers in there. So I'm going to keep watching, Tom. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, right from beautiful Chicago, freezing Chicago, <laughs> our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, is going to get you going on these it's gonna option, heat you up. option strategies, right. no doubt. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show. Great talking to you guys. You Thanks, too. Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials up 21. Nasdaq's up 16. S and P's are up uh, three and a half. And uh, yeah, this is a good story. So this is just coming across uh, the Supreme Court. This is a, this is interesting too. It's a 9-0 decision, yeah. right? Yeah. And this is literally uh, this is just happening right now. Right? Yeah. yeah. So within the last 15, 10 minutes, almost. Yeah. So this is about uh, curb and state power to levy fines and seize property. So yeah. He, so you had a unanimous decision, 9-0. You had yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg writing the decision and actually reading it from the bench, which is just a statement, you know, right. in terms of not right. all decisions get read from the bench. Um, and the ruling puts new limits on what critics say is an increasingly common and abusive government practice of using fines and for forfeitures to raise revenue. Exactly. Um, exactly. Most people probably have heard about this. It's been on the press a lot in terms of oh, just yeah. seizing property and, uh, and then having it almost be the person's um, obligation to fight to get that property back. Exactly. Um, right. Right. And and you know localities have been using it as a way to raise revenue, and so the Supreme Court's sending quite a message, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah, nothing like it. Power yeah. corrupts. Oh yeah. Um, you could have a small you know infraction. The person maybe they're saying they have drugs. Maybe they're saying whatever. They come in and that one I just saw at the end that they seized a Land Rover. You know, right. you're talking about seventy, eighty thousand dollars. Meanwhile, what happened to innocent until proven guilty, man? You know, yeah, and, and so that's totally, the totally. totally. And then they, they made it part of their budget. That's the, that's the real bottom line. Well, yeah. That's, I mean, you know, if yeah. if yeah, yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go take a look at that dollar. So what's so intriguing here, folks, is that you know you had the metal run, you know, yesterday. It's still running today, and the dollar still hasn't given it up. You know, we're basically really at the highs. You know, I mean, sure. you're off the high. We tested it Friday, but sure. guess what? The high is ninety seven one ninety five. We're at ninety six four twenty. Okay. You know, so it's going to be really cool watching this how this whole thing sh shakes out. What I mean is that. The markets are always right. The markets sure. are the markets. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So it's like, okay. So is gold gold is in an ABC structure on the way up, 1354. You got GDX and AB, ABC up. You got XAU and ABC up. And HUI. There, here, let me pull this up because I didn't look at the volumes yet from the XAU, HUI. But the way that the gold market ran, all the equities ran, it should have higher volume as it took out these babies. Okay, so we did 52 million, yeah. Out of 31. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it blew it away. Yeah. Um, and so that's so intriguing, man. You know, it's like, okay, you haven't given it up yet. And if that baby gives up the ghost, then you're going to really get some action, man. Sure. Um, and when I was, we were talking about Kevin with Cop, watch this. This is like, and, you know, I remember this. When, when the big runs happen in gold, Copper basically moves. And it, 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 I forget whether it basically moves first or not. It's not necessarily that. But you can see this move in Copper. You know, yesterday, well, three days ago, we were, we're trading at 275. You're 290. 15 cents a pound. Sure. Uh, we put this HG, you put this on. This is an ABC up. It's blowing away. We put this on a continuous contract where you're going to say, I think 305 is the number. Yeah, see, it's taken out this consolidation. To, once it got over 286, well, that's 330. It's interesting, man. I mean, and look at that. Actually, wow, no wonder why. It is. See, this goes right with gold, too. Because when I'm bringing this back, February 2011, right, that's when gold hit high, too. Let me do a, do a compare on this. I'll put the GD. Okay, so I want to compare it to GC. Active contract. Let's try that. Uh, generic contract. That's what I want. Update it. Yeah. So it does move right with it. Look sure. at that. So the yellow line, folks, is gold. The white line is copper. So this is intriguing, man. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And I, I would say that uh, this probably has to do, you know, that that dollar basically is going to give up the ghost. We'll, we'll see. You know, the. Um, how about Tesla? Can oh, we talk yeah. about our man Elon Little, Musk? Oh, my God. Somebody that doesn't have the handcuffs else, on his tweets just yet. Let's, let's go over the, uh, it, it, the look, tweets. Look at this. This sure. is amazing, folks, that it hasn't even moved. I mean, it's only yeah. down 79 cents. And you get two different things that end up happening. He's, he's tweeting out that he's going to do, what, 500,000 cars? And he's lucky we'll, to do We'll pull up 000. the exact. Let's look at yeah. it because it had more volatility than that. I just wanted to spike. You know, it was down to 298 and then it rebounded. But I have the tweet, the actual one up here. There we go. And so here was the original tweet. Okay. Tesla made zero cars in 2011, but will make around 500,000 in 2019. Okay. Pretty definitive, right? Well, what he meant to say was, and this is guidance yeah. from the CEO, right. Right? right? What he meant to say was, at the end of 2019, we'll probably have an annualized production rate of 10,000 cars a week. I see. So for that, it's, it goes from saying we're gonna make half a million cars in this current year, to, to saying to the last week of to say, December, yeah, we're going to be ten thousand a week, yeah. and it's only the middle of February. So like, yeah, so this? so the deliveries for the year still estimated four hundred thousand, so it's yeah. hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. And they lost their, their uh, yes. Now the next one, and that that's yeah. probably a bigger story because this is just garbage in terms of he right. just I wouldn't trust anything he puts out. This is pretty substantial when you have the general counsel after two months. Two months that is so make any short. Sense. Yeah, yeah, you're just getting right. acclimated to be that freaked out. What what did he yeah. or she find? Right? Yes. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I mean, it's just that's you know you usually give yourself at least a few months to to figure out Unless what's you going see on. Something and you I don't agree. Like. I agree. And yeah. you know they just go over that it's 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 probably Tesla. Uh, it's probably Elon Musk because he's a tough boss as we've seen. And um, the next person is going to be reporting directly. So it's going to be, um, let's see, where? Chang? Yeah, I was trying to get the full name up here somewhere. Jonathan Chang, okay. The t uh, their current vice president of legal is going to take over that position. He's 40 years old. He's been with Tesla for eight years. Um, probably thinks that maybe th he won't jump ship if he's been here for eight years. But yeah. he will report directly to CEO Elon Musk. So I'm guessing that um, the previous one was reporting right to Elon Musk too and they were not a fan of whatever that entailed. Uh, jumping around, CVS, right? How about that? So tumbling about 9% will jump over the chart as they take a hit from that investment in Aetna. Um, and so they closed that $70 billion acquisition in just November. And then let's get down to some of those forecasts. Where are they? So earnings per share, let's see. The company reported compared to Wall Street is expecting. Earnings, not bad. Looks like revenue slightly Shot. under, but yeah. 2019 will be a year of transition as we integrate and focus on key pillars. Let's see. So for the full year, CVS forecasted 668 below the 741 for okay. earnings. There you go. The company expects revenue of 249 billion 
Well, okay, between 249 to 254, yeah. uh, Street was pretty much in line, but it looks like the earnings, they're going to be spending too much money, and uh, they plan to spend 325 to 350 million on investments. Um, so it seems the earnings Which are. Which wipes out the net savings of 300 to 350 million that CBS anticipated from the Etna acquisition. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm so, yeah, you. this will stoke fears that the Etna deal was defensive in nature. Yeah. And uh, that base CVS will continue to reset lower. Uh, integration cost almost half billion. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? You buy a $70 billion company yeah. to integrate that type of Huge. operation. Um, yeah, CVS expects adjusted operating income for its retail and long term care business to drop about 10% this year to a range of 6.5 to 6.7 billion. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877 927 We have the Dow up 17. NASDAQ up 16. SP's up free. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30 day free trial. Every morning by 9 30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 32, Nasdaq's up 20, S&Ps are up about four and a half. And let's go take a look at that CVS, because uh, this is a, a nasty-looking chart out here, man. You know, we put this on a monthly, but you're going to see you've been building cars here for some time. You know, you're down, hit a high in uh, August of 2015, $113. And, you know, it's just pounding on this yeah. uh, $60 area. Yeah. 
And y y your problem here in CVS is that, there's, you know, you get, what's that, about five months of support sure. at this level. Middle of 2013. Yeah, you know, but if it can crack that level, and, you know, the way that it's been coming down, it looks like it can crack that level. Yeah. But that, that's... I mean, quite a run, right? Even from... August of 2010 at 26 bucks, yep. but even if you start it, you're at uh, August of 2011 at 31, right. right? And you run up basically a straight line. Straight line. So about uh, from 2011 to 2015, you go from yep. 31 to 113. And then when you crack it, meaning oh, you've come and, down, it's and, a problem. You can and, see all that volume. And man, look this... at that crack from 113 to yep. 81 in one month, and that was in August of 15. That's intense. That is. Now let's go to the banks because. <laughs> This is so institutionalized right now, folks. It's pretty amazing, actually. So, next on the agenda, UBS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, five point, no, four point five billion. Oh yeah, no, five point yeah. one billion U.S. Yep. Uh, four point five billion euro by a Paris court that the bank found guilty of uh, basically stashing. Uh, French clients money in Swiss banks. Yeah, undeclared cash, yeah. right, from French clients in undeclared Swiss accounts. So I guess that Swiss banking uh, system is still allowing for some, some shady happenings. But you know what? Not, not entirely, because uh, if investigators dig deep enough, I guess they can find them. They can get it. Yeah. The thing that's amazing to me. Can about, I, just, I just wanted to read yeah. what it said. Uh, UBS illegally provided customers with banking services to hide assets from tax authorities. So the, the judge fined them. 3.7 billion euros and added another 800 million in compensation probably for them going after the bank right, right, um, right. in terms of digging into that is almost a, an epic the criminal wrongdoings were of an exceptionally serious nature said the judge uh, these acts were committed behind the veil of opacity uh, for eight years UBS is dealing with French probe eight years so there you go yep. that is the quite a uh, ahead of the wow so it was a trial last year's trial the lender was accused in the indictment of dispatching Swiss bankers across the border to seek out new clients even though they lacked the paperwork to offer such services in France pretty I mean just uh, not nonchalant right actually no. dispatching people different countries right um, bank has consistently contested any criminal wrongdoing yeah well every the thing that blows my mind in, in all these banks, they really are criminals. I mean, you know, even our U.S. banks, they've got so many fines, sure. but nothing ever happens. So, so it's so institutionalized, folks. Yeah. you, you got to wrap your head around that, man. I mean, yeah. it's like I'm trying to figure out, like, is there a certain school that you go to that they teach you this? <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, you know well, that they must hire the, the brightest people out there. I mean, you know, these are monster banks. So it's like, sure. how do you hire the brightest people and then... You know that they're going to be so protected that you do something that is against the law anyway. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just, it's, it's pretty wild. So let's see, for the first three months, all seemed to be going to plan for UBS. Testimony was consistent and in favor of the bank. Then, mid-trial, me, we'll go back, who, who is me, started telling defendants, this is probably the judge maybe, she didn't buy their explanations and her remarks became sarcastic. The judge cut off a UBS exec executive for lecturing her and even yelled at UBS's main counsel for squabbling with plaintiff lawyer during a defendant. So the judge just saw through whatever they, uh, they had going on there, thankfully. And that's quite, I mean, even as you look at uh, the record punishments, um, in terms of the size of the fines. Um, oh, look at all those, yeah. yeah. And so you're. And that, is that in billions? Yeah, it is in billions. It is in right? billions. Now, this, this is probably maybe. Uh, I don't know if this is like Europe. Maybe this has. To, because. It looks like just in Europe. That's what Julius I was, Beer, that's UBS, it, yeah. Credit Suisse. We have plenty of them in the U.S. That's though. why Wells remember, Fargo I mean, isn't up here. So I know Wells Fargo got fined, but maybe this right. is just talking about different. Uh, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Let's see, what other headlines? There are, there are a bunch as I was doing the update this morning. Uh, whoops, I'm clicking buttons. That's probably going to jump up, but. Uh, yeah, Southwest, too. I know oh, this. yeah. So they cut their revenue forecast, um, talking about $60 million is going to be their hit, they estimate. Now, they had just said last month that they were talking about only 10 to $15 million okay. from the shutdown. They upped that to That's 60 quite a hit. And then on a one-two punch, kind of like Tesla, you have Goldman Sachs downgrading them, just having to do with maybe some of their longer routes. Hawaii going to be too costly for what they're thinking about um, they're going to do. And to jump over even on theirs, do I still have it? No, that was Tesla. Southwest LUV down 5.5 percent, quite a number, yeah. and um, even down off the open. Right, they were up at uh, 55.39, almost a dollar down from where we were just at 9.45 this morning. So the market not liking that. Yeah, let me pull that up too. Uh, there we go. Uh, one more time.
Okay, so the low for the year is 44, the high is 64. 30 billion dollar company, not bad. Okay, so uh, brings, quite a run up in, yeah. uh, since the beginning of almost 2019. Yeah, so you get a you get a big consolidation here. Yeah. Let me pull this back a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Not the end of the world, right? I mean, that's, you know, you're still in the anything over 51 you're in the higher range. Sure. But, you know, these airlines that's quite a hit, man. <laughs> it definitely, it is. you know, price-wise, it's definitely quite a hit. The uh, did you see that uh, the jet stream yesterday? I did. It I was listening to your program okay. yesterday. Right. I was at home. Uh, right. I sure did. I pulled up myself. This right? is pretty cool, folks. Eight hundred and one miles. Eight hundred and one miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, the jet Atlantic. stream over yeah. over kind of New York area, yeah. right. right? Right. And I, I I was looking it up myself, even when you were talking about it, just to dig into it because yeah. I was curious, and uh, it was pretty cool. They talked about. Sound barrier 767, yeah, um, right. 768. I might be, but somewhere right around there, that's breaking right. the sound barrier. Right. But then what they went over was, that's the airspeed. Right. 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 And so when you're going with the wind, you're yeah. not going against the air that fast, as in because you got the wind that's going with cool. you. So okay. they didn't technically okay. break. You know, that's you need to be going against right. the actual wind to break that sound barrier. Whereas they're going with the wind, yeah. so they wouldn't break the sound barrier. And so learned the, a little science yeah, in the, the, in the, the mix. Yeah. The plane ended up in London. And folks, 48 minutes early. Yeah, not bad. That's right? a tailwind, man. That is. You gotta love it. Yeah, pretty cool. Seriously. Yeah. So let's go take a look at uh, inside the NDX. As we were talking with Kevin, folks, what has happened in the last few days is that you have a divergence, meaning that the NDX just can't seem to catch a bid. It got over the highs yesterday, closed underneath them. What you have out here today, the leaders inside of it, you got Cadence Design up 5%. C Trip is up 2.8, Micron Tech is up 2.7, and NVIDIA is up 2.7. Taken away from it is Henry Schein down 7. That's quite a hit. Yeah. What's um, going on there? We'll check it out. Walgreens uh, Boots is down 3. Interesting. We uh, Walmart is down 1.9. Let's no, go look what, what at Walmart. Was, that wasn't. No. Were you? you United, United Airlines? What did you say, Walmart? Where's, oh, United Airlines. United okay. Airlines is down 1.9. Americans down yeah. uh, 1.9. Three, but let's go look at Walgreens. Yeah, Walgreens is probably Wonder going south on the heels of that. Yeah, it's not, but yeah, but the CVS deal has nothing to do with like the industry. It's kind of you know what I mean, yeah. which is a little weird. How uh, well that's what they it, they were saying that, that the reason that CVS was getting hit, they thought that that was a defensive move versus an accretive move. Sure, you know they're claiming that no, it's going to be accretive, and the market at the time was saying that no, that's defensive. Which they, to make that's sure that's smart too, right? To make sure what Walgreens doesn't come exactly. in exactly scoop them up. Yeah. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow up 33. Nasdaq up 23. S&P's up five and a half. Gold's up 230. Silver's up eight cents. You get, uh, oh, there we go. King Dollar's turning. Down 29 ticks. End of the world. Coming at you. <laughs> Come right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 33, Nasdaq up 24, S&P's up 5.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can find Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocked. And bottom line, we, he's going to help us uh, get through uh, where these currencies are going, Let's man. Let's do it. They've been laying here for so long. What's <laughs> happening, brother? Morning, guys. Good to see you guys again. Morning, you Teddy. You know... We got gold going. I mean, gold is saying dollar wants to get down, man, but that thing is hanging there. <laughs> right. I think, well, I think what we have going on today is that everyone's hanging on these Fed minutes. So yeah, there's, 2 o'clock. Today after today. I'm sorry? Yes. No, that's right. No, no doubt. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think that the, the biggest thing is about the dovish aspect because there's already been this switch in the, the, um, the thinking of how the Fed is going to move into 2019. And I Think that after the minutes today, the dovish um, factor is going to be pretty much laid in stone for a little bit, you know. And I think that's why right now the currencies are kind of pretty slow because the dollar, since we talked last week, has taken a little bit of a step back against all the major currencies. And yes. I think right now, especially, we have the uh, dollar Swiss touching parity. Okay. And the dollar index that's on its lows over the past five days. So I think that we have to see how these minutes come out. And as long as it secures that dovishness, I think you're going to see some follow through with the dollar taking some heat laid in stone i love that teddy <laughs> <laughs> i like that well you know it, it is amazing man i mean you know because the well copper took off too copper gold silver you know and, and the dollar still laying there so i said to tommy a little bit earlier i i actually really love it when it's like this because the market's going to be right we know whatever the market's going to do it's going to do and at two o'clock just as you said it very well just may dive that dollar. You know, we'll find out sure. pretty quickly. And, and you know, we've, we've been talking over the past few weeks about how the interest rates and the credit spreads have been kind of moving in a really odd direction for yes. what was going on over that time. Now I think it's we can understand why the interest rates were doing what they were doing. They were precursor to what the Fed is doing, which is being becoming very dovish. Right, right. So. And you know the yen, the yen's hanging there, right? You got it at a buck ten, man. I mean that thing's not getting any stronger. That's that's. And the Bank of Japan, now, the yen is going to be very interesting after today because the Bank of Japan is not very happy with the trend of the U.S. dollar um, yen right now. Okay. So after today, once we know how the dollar is going to be pretty much impacting overall against the majors, yeah, I think you're going to see a reaction by the Bank of Japan over the next couple of days, or definitely by next week. Okay. And, you know, the pound caught another bid, right? The pound caught yep. a good bid yesterday. Sure. Well, I think, again, we've talked about this. This Brexit stuff is going to be a lot softer of a landing than they've been kind of touting in the news. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And we'll find out whether the euro can catch a bid. You know, the, <laughs> I, 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 I like what the, the pound has done because, sure. you know, we had that good mm -hmm. run a couple weeks ago, pulled back to where it, it was strong, took off again. 
but the euro just still can't get it going. But it, there's no it's doubt. It's just in a wide range trade, you know. But then, like we, like we just mentioned, the, the U.S. dollar, Swiss touching parity now. If the dollar gets hammered and goes below parity again and there's strength in the Swiss, then that's going to lift the euro tight as well then. Ah, cool. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right? I mean, I, I, yeah. I think that's at least in the short run, not over long, overall trend, but I think over the next couple of days and the next week, that would probably be the reaction you would get and finally get some bullish momentum because the euro, every time they get a pop, you see it, they'll get a point and a half move to the upside and then settle up there. And the next day, it's just, I mean, last week, it was just a big blender, you know? Oh, there's no doubt, man. I mean, it just keeps coming right back into, into those uh, lows. But you can see last three days, I mean, you know, you know, it's amazing, man, is that folks, in the market, you need patience. That's the real bottom line. <laughs> sure. And a lot of things in life, but the market yeah. is sure, too. But yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt, man, because it's like that thing just keeps laying there. And you know, when you go back, I mean, the euro, as well as the pound, folks, okay, have been much stronger in the past. I mean, so if these things do turn, you can, you can get a, quite an expansion on the way up. I mean, these things have been low for see, a long period of time. You can see a buck 25 in the euro again. Yep. Yeah, no, right? I, can, I can see that. That's not, out, that's not out of the realm of possibility, especially if we get a really, truly dovish sentiment and we get a, a move. Yeah, it's very possible to get it up to 124 again. Man, if it's that dovish, this market's going to go to the highs. <laughs> 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 and the S&P, I mean, that, that S&P won't give it up either, man. I mean, it, it doesn't have any juice, but bottom well, line is that that's been quite a, uh, you know, quite, a, quite a run off that December 24th bottom. Well, if we yeah, have think about this, too, if the Fed really is dovish, we could probably see another leg up in the stock market then. Yeah, no, I listen, it's it's and that's right. where what gets really interesting here, folks, is that if you have the dollar really get crushed on the way down, the market can go up. Now, that makes anyone that's spending money in the United States more money, but not necessarily taking that trade off, putting it in the dollar and then trying to go spend money in Europe. You know, that, that, that always intrigues me because as soon as you get outside of your country, if your currency is getting weaker, well, you know, you, sure. get, you, get, you have less spending power, buying power. Right? Yeah. So. Okay, well, that listen. Means you're not going out overseas for vacation as much. <laughs> right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. You better buy those tickets now, folks. Yeah. Get those. Right. Reserve your That's... hotel right now. Pay, oh. it, pay it up front. Hey, uh, yeah, they'll love you. <laughs> but the trend in gold, I, I think, is going to continue as well. I think the short-term sell-off is just a little break to buy, and I think that's going to keep supporting what we've been seeing over the past few weeks. Well, you know, I saw those numbers come out of Switzerland yesterday, and so what happens in Switzerland, folks, that's the epicenter of all recycled gold. That's They get sent over there, the gold bars come back out of there, and uh, those numbers, man, China, uh, they bought 100 and they were big numbers. I don't yeah, remember them either, but tons. people can sign up for the gold report and go check it right, out right now. Right. That's where I got them. Right? Exactly. 101 tons. They were up 40 percent in January, and Hong Kong was up 101 percent. But it's a small number, 600, 6.1 yeah, billion. In terms of billion. what was getting exported Six from Switzerland to those countries. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And it gets lost once it gets there. It's, okay. It's going. <laughs> yeah. Meaning lost. I hear it's, you. it's going. Yeah. You know. So you gotta, where it goes from there, good luck shaking it down, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. It's kind of like how money comes into the state of Illinois and disappears the same way. Oh, nice. I saw uh, the, oh, the, <laughs> what, what Teddy's talking about, folks, this morning, they're going to they get float a bond to pay off. Oh, my God, that number is insane. I saw this this morning coming across, Teddy. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, All I, right, we'll have to find it. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good one. It's, it's, it's a, astronomical. It's, uh, it's ridiculous is it, what it is. It, it, it is an astronomical one, man. Oh, my God. Hey. Right. You just keep pushing that bucket down the road, right? Man. That's exactly it. And, well, well, well. You, you so we got our signals last week. Those all, all were confirmed, and that followed through into this, uh, where we're at with this uh, little pinnacle moment with the dollar, guys. And I think that we'll see after the minutes are released whether we get this follow through or, or them or, or not. If they, for some reason, have a, anything that goes hawkish, well, then look for the volatility to come in a big switch and trend. Fireworks. Listen, folks, you can, you can find Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Of course, you can catch him here every Wednesday, 40 past the hour. Teddy, you have a great one, safe one. Stay warm up there, and we look forward to speaking to you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. You have a great week, too. You appreciate it. Thanks, Teddy. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Well, we get the lowdown, man.
Chicago politics. Watch out, baby. Oh, that, that, we'll get that bond. I thought that was the that lowdown. I want issue. that lowdown. Oh, we'll we'll pull it up. I'm interested. Dow's up 31, Nasdaq's up 22, SP's up 5.5. Tommy and I come right back, folks. Stay right there. We both know you've got what it takes to crush your goals with the will to make it happen. So why haven't you accomplished it yet? For most, the answer is fear. Fear is that limiting factor that stops us from getting what we truly want, but it doesn't have to. That's why on Wednesday, February 27th from 5 to 6 p.m., I'll be hosting my one-hour workshop, Overcoming Fear in Five Easy Steps. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, the 2018 Market Timer of the Year, author of Mastering Probability and an expert in human emotion. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain free access to this extraordinary workshop where I'll coach you how to bust through your barriers of fear. How you respond to fear is what sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. Look, this could be the most valuable hour we ever spend together. So come to the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your 30-day risk-free trial of Mastering Probability and take the next step towards the life you deserve. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we did find that uh, bond issue. Let's just go down to, if you want to see, I mean, most folks know that Illinois has been in trouble for a yeah, long Illinois, time. Yeah. But th this scale chart is pretty amazing. Yeah, so it's talking about unfunded liabilities having to do with the state retirement system. Yep. Um, and so, you know, the, the graph is pretty self-explanatory. In 2004, we're somewhere under 50 billion. And uh, in the last three years, we're hovering basically just under 150 billion. So the numbers aren't really staggering compared to that because, I mean, they're only talking about, so you have a governor taking a page out of his predecessor's pension fund playbook, trying to learn from their mistakes. They're going to uh, seek to sell $2 billion in bonds to inject cash into the state's retirement system, a tactic tried in 2003 that failed to stop the swelling. 2003, that's not even on this chart to put things right. in context, all right? Right. Um, so they tried this in 2003 to kind of swell, it, stop that. And what you had happening is that um, let's let's get down. So the potential borrowing is part of a broader plan to try and tackle that 134 billion. 
I mean, obviously, you can't do it by issuing debt, right? In terms of it's got to be you spend less or you tax more, um, because it's it's anyway. Yeah, um, it's, pretty it, simple. They're math. in a rabbit hole. Yeah, exactly. So, so. The new governor's approach, if enacted as proposed, would mark a break from how the previous governors used pension bonds to cover their annual payments or hold down such contributions. That practice, driving, of course, deeper into the hole, and failed to set aside enough money each year to ensure that the state will be able to pay for all the benefits that they've promised to employees. Yeah. So they keep paying, they don't pay into the Man, system. I wish we had more time to get into it. That's all right. People can go dig. Pretty remarkable. Stay right there, folks. we got Fast Market coming up next, and we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. We'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Ben. Well, go get them, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.